Well, hello everyone. It's uh, Colin again. Well, this is made of a treat for you. So you get to see me with my luscious locks flowing here. Yes, I am a full-on goalie locks rocker. Um, just giving you everyone an update on what has happened. It is now Tuesday the 2nd of October and I've had my fight. Um, fought the draw with Johnny and to be honest, in my opinion, I think Johnny had me in the last 30 seconds in the round. He had me in a smashing arm lock with his legs. Um, but I managed to not tap out and the ref didn't tap me out or force me to quit the round. So we fought the draw. Um, I still feel that in that last 30 seconds, Johnny had me. That's, I'll completely honest, open it up. Big respect to you, Johnny. You did really well in the ring. And, uh, but that is it. Yeah. So the journey is over for now. Um, basically, we are in a situation now that it is the Ultra MMA is over for 2018. And that's me. Yeah. So the, the Belfast fight completed. Uh, I think there was 24 fights on the night in total. Uh, mine was the last fight of the night, which didn't happen to about half 10. And that was excruciating. Uh, it really was just from the point of view of having to wait around all evening and all day. And we were there from half one in the afternoon um, and it was so busy and everything, there was so much going on. I didn't even get my hands wrapped the after, I think it was quarter past eight or something like that. Um, not a fault of the organization team or anything like that, the ultra organization, that was just what happened because it was just absolutely crazy. And there was, someone said to me, you had 158 people in the room that night. Um, it certainly felt like there was a lot more. Uh, it was a good crowd, good atmosphere, um, and some absolutely smashing fights from the other people who I've been training with. Um, everyone, wonderful uh, situation when we were in the back room, when we were warming up, everyone helping each other out with pads and sparring and all. Um, good words of support. Overall, yeah. Yeah. Um, the actual fight itself, I have to admit, I didn't get nervous until I was about to walk out and it was weird because me and Johnny were the last fight. I wasn't nervous about the fight. I wasn't nervous about my family seeing me and my friends seeing me fight. I was actually nervous about the people who I trained with fighting, uh, seeing me fight. So that was an odd sensation. That was a really strange feeling. I felt I was I felt like a pressure that I was if I didn't do well, I would end up letting them down. Because the last fight of the night, you know, you want to do your best for everyone. So, yeah, a bit mad. Um, but got in the ring. First round, it's quite evenly matched. Second round, I I would say I had the edge in Johnny, although he did hit me an absolutely smashing right hook, right in the nose, Bob. Boss my nose, bleeding like mad. Hey, good job, Johnny. Uh, third round, he went all technical, really going for the poles down, the wrestling and stuff like that. Um, I was trying to help go for more of a spar kick, and he just wasn't letting me near him. So, fair play to you, Johnny. Uh, in my eyes, even though it was a draw, it's definitely a win for you. There's, there's no question in my mind, I felt like he won. So I'm just being honest about that. Now on to the next part, um, the collection. Well done, everyone. I can't, I know I've said thank you loads, but my God almighty, it just went ballistic, absolutely ballistic in the last few days. Um, at last count, it was just under £1,250. That's £1,250 donated from my friends, my family, car clubs, and my local village. Whenever I went knocking door to door, looking like a giant fluorescent yellow Teletubby um, with my cancer research box. So, yeah. um, so wonderful, wonderful. There is still more money coming in because I still have three more uh, change boxes, loose change boxes in my local village shop, Chippy and Pub. I'm going to collect them for the end of the month because the uh, donations allow me to run until the, I think it was the 30th of October. So I'll get them all dropped in and um, probably not make a massive difference to the overall result, but £1,250. Now that's before gift aid as well. And this is what I kept saying to everyone, the importance of the gift aid. The gift aid total on top of that, I think is £175. 
So, you know, it's just shy of £1,400. That's brilliant. Abs or just, just over 1400 pound all in that's brilliant that's absolutely wonderful i mean all, all that money goes straight to cancer research there's no tax there's no stamp whatever bang job done um I, I couldn't feel prouder for watching everyone else that was there on the night and everyone fighting and everyone taking part and it was just I know people say, oh, it's an experience like nothing else. It was an experience like nothing else because hanging around and waiting like that, that was, that was nerve wracking. It was a real, <sighs> long story short, basically what happened was we discovered that myself and Johnny weren't on the fighting roster. And, oh, what a disaster that was. Um, it was actually the medical guys realized it. And then we figured out what had happened was the printer had run out of paper and we were going to be on it. So we were going to be last anyway. So last fight of the night, bit scary, bit intimidating. Um, but I genuinely did enjoy it. I really got a real kick out of the whole event. Um, I still think that I probably got more out of the training, personally and mentally, than the actual fight itself. Um, I definitely still maintain I one of the, was one of the lower end fighters. But still, nonetheless, it was it was really cool. <sighs> uh, got something to show you. I'm going to pause this. And I'll be back in a second. Sorry, folks. Uh, a few things I want to go through with you tonight uh, or today. And show you. This. this video is also going to be a reflection on the process. Um, if anyone's ever considering doing ultra MMA, some really really good tips and advice. Um, First of all, you get a wee mini trophy for taking part, which is this. That'll be going on my mantelpiece. But thanks to everyone's help, I was the top fundraiser in the event. Um, the total event, I believe, raised over 8,600 was what saw it at last count. It may be more because our um, page has stopped updating. And I was given this by a cancer research representative, a uh, top fundraiser. This, whilst there's only a little bit of perspex, means a lot. It really means a lot to me. Um, really, really, when I was handling it, when I was in the ring, it was very emotional. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was going on. I came out to do our warm up to welcome to the crowd. And Ryan, one of the organizers, handed me this. I mean, some photos were taken and that was that. And um, yeah, it really, from that point onwards, I was very emotional for the rest of the night because it obviously brought up personal feelings and personal memories. Like a lot of people who were there fighting on the night, a lot of people fighting in memory of, or for, in front of representing family members who have maybe got illnesses or have suffered with illnesses or have passed in illnesses. Um, some guys there and some of their wee t-shirts and their wee slogans that they had and their grandfathers and their you know relatives sisters aunties uncles mothers you name it um yeah it, it got real emotional it got real emotional for a lot of people and it's hard to isolate that in that situation whenever you're trying to go into uh an environment where you've got to be aggressive and tactical and destructive Yet the only thing that's going through your mind is why you're there. Well, what you're doing it for. You're doing it for a charity. You're doing it for a good cause. It's a very, it's a very confusing situation to be in. And perhaps that will come in time with discipline and uh, improved mentality that I can maybe, um, you know, separate my emotions and focus my uh, abilities there a bit better. Again, this whole process has been a, a method with me coping with sort of like a, a form of depression and anxiety and all so that from that point of view it's been wonderful um from a fitness point of view it's been spectacular i can't recommend this enough if you're looking for a way to get fit um this is it if you're looking for a way to get hurt this is it and uh, there has been a few injuries through training um i myself bruised lung one cracked rib three cracked ribs there possibly a fourth um, still went out still did the fight and boy oh boy have I been feeling it on Monday and Tuesday I have been sore 
Sunday it was okay. Sunday I thought, oh, well, that's all right. That's okay. But as any sportsman or any martial artist will tell you or anyone who's regularly getting injured in physical events, this is something I've only just discovered. It's usually 48 to 72 hours after the event is when you suffer. Um, boy, have I been suffering. Uh, to sneeze, is, if I sneeze, I feel like I'm ready to pass it. <laughs> um, if I'm, you know, I, I've been trying to do a couple of runs. I tried to do a run yesterday. It just wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. I just felt like my chest was being sat on by a mass. I felt like a car had fallen on my chest. It was unbelievable. Today, um, again, same issue, same issue. Now, I was just not going to stop me. This is obviously just going to take time to heal as nature always does. Um, this, this is the nature with these sorts of things and it will improve. It's just going to be a couple more weeks. It'll be fine. I'm still working on running. I'm still doing my own bits and pieces. But yeah, so that's that's overall um, what the experience was like coming out to the ring. It was pretty sedate, to be honest, um, with me and Johnny being the last fight of the night. We'd been down that many times and we'd been talking to people that many times as they were coming up and down and we were experiencing their wins and losses. It was really hard for me to get... Now, I was nervous, but I wasn't tense. Or maybe I was tense and I wasn't nervous. It's a hard, there's an emotion that was there that it's very hard to pin down. Yeah, it was a strange feeling, strange feeling. Uh, I felt very, felt it very difficult to tap into the aggression there um, because of that. But no, so that was that. Um, came down, run out to our theme songs. Um, my theme song situation had changed. What I actually ran out to was Fuel by Metallica. Now I know I'd explained to a few people that I had planned to do costume and a really funny song to come out to. Um, what had happened was I'd ordered a costume for Mortal Kombat, the character Scorpion, who is a yellow ninja, face mask and everything. And I was gonna come out to the Mortal Kombat rave song. You know, the Mortal Kombat. Do, 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 do. And anyone who's heard the song knows it's exactly like that. That is just how it goes. Yeah, so I planned to do that. Um, costume arrived. I wasn't happy with the costume. It was a bit small. Um, so I sent it back, hoping to get another one. Um, they screwed me around, screwed me around. And in the end, I just get, got a refund and said, do you know what, sold it. And I just put the costume money into the cancer research donation instead. Uh, so that's why no one got the costume competition or the costume competition tickets or anything like that. All that was just a case of, well, do you know what? I've thrown that personal money in instead. It was an interesting experience coming out to the song. You know, you get yourself really pumped up and you're you're trying to see what's going on. My family were a wee bit bad in the back there because um, there were two types of tiers of seating, seated and non-seated tickets. Non-seated tickets, I can, you know, maybe... 30, 35 feet away from the ring and the room was well lit so everyone could see what was going on so there was no problems there and some have put, uh, given me photographs in all sense. Um, get in the ring, ring is about 14 feet of an octagon so it's small enough, you know, you're not going to be able to stay away for that length of time, you know, you're not going to, you know, if each of you took two steps from the outside of the ring, you are in each other's faces so it's you know, plus when you throw a referee in there, suddenly it becomes a very small working area. Um, obviously, that's much smaller than a normal MMA ring. Um, again, to be expected. Like, <laughs> um, You do wonder why they keep it that small at our level. It's no doubt probably a safety issue or to try and stop people running around or acting like agents. I'm, I'm sure there's some very technical reason for it. But yeah, you're in the ring and... Boy, the time flies when you're in the cage. I've never felt three minutes go as fast in my life. First round, flew in. Second round, absolutely flew in. Absolutely flew in. Um, especially when I had Johnny in the headlock. Um, that just felt like just bang, 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 bang. I, you know, it felt like I had him in the headlock for a long time, but then it, it also felt like the round was over really quick. The only time it felt like any length at all was in the third round, in the last 30 seconds or so. 
and I didn't even realize it was the last 30 seconds. I just felt myself in pain, like I said, when I was in the arm lock. And that was, that, that was, that was, that was uncomfortable. That was uncomfortable. Um, he had a pretty good grip on me, and um, I'd been doing my best not to get my arm in between his legs, and I was pushing down, he was pushing away. I had his face like this, and I shoved away, and, but he got me, he got me, and fair play to him. He got me in the arm lock, and I would say I was about five or ten seconds away from tapping out, because that was just, it was not a nasty feeling. It was a nasty feeling indeed. Um, yeah, so rings over, fat mates, fights over, called a draw, and we went and done our medicals. Um, medicals took not too long. It's just basically checking us all over from top to toe. Um, blood meter, chest meter, run through the questions. Do you feel like you're going to die? No. Do you feel like you have a head injury? No. What's that coming out of your nose? Oh, that's just the blood from when he smacked me in the face. Standard shit. So anyway, the fight's over, and um, we go back out see our friends and family and everyone is gone because the, we, as being the last fight of the night we thought oh some things will still carry on no they cleared the room they shut they did an announcement the fight's over everyone's out bang so everyone else who had already fought during the evening had been showered changed was down in their suits and ties and all and me and johnny stand there in our fight gear going right okay so we quickly did a wee quick rounds i met some of his family and he met some of my family and then we went in the back to get uh, sorted out, changed into your clothes, etc., etc. But yeah, that was it. The fight's done. Um, Twelve hundred fifty pound, and then the uh, just given donations of with the um, what do you call it tax? The free tax, extra hundred seventy five. So that's over fourteen hundred pound. I'm really happy with that. Um, I know it's set two thousand pound as, as a goal. But I never expected to get half of it. You know, I just tried to be optimistic about the whole process and thought, ah, fuck it, see what happens. Um, with regards to the whole process, I cannot thank the likes of, you know, we've Dave and Phil and, and all who were down doing the training every week and Luke and Obi who were training, training us and taking us through paces. And Sean, who was my ring corner man, um, Sean it was screaming really good advice at me the whole way around the, the ring. Especially whenever I had Johnny up against the cage in the second round. And he was screaming at me, here's your knee, here's your knee. And I had Johnny like that. And bang, the knee goes flying in. And I just heard this, Ugh! and I was trying to get a second one. But he just managed to get himself down, so I couldn't get a second one. But uh, So big thanks to Sean for really helping me out with being the ring man there. Uh, it made a big difference when he came in and talked to me in between rounds. And also screaming at me from the side of the cage. <laughs> um, uh, shout out to Ryan as well for organising it as well. I know he's the Ultra MMA representative and has you know does the Ultra Box and the Ultra MMA as well. So, yeah, that's that's an overall review of what happened. Um, am I happy? Yeah, actually, I am. Um, how do I feel after it? Brilliant. How happy am I about it all? I wish I hadn't been the last fight, but someone had to be. Would it do it again? Yes. And I am doing it again. I've signed up again for the Ultra MMA fights in May in 2019. Training will start in March 2019. And I'm going to do it all again. Um, hopefully you feel that you can sponsor me again. Um, if you do, you do great. And if you don't, you don't. There will be more videos as we're going along. I've decided to carry on with my training. I'm going to carry on with my personal training with Ryan. I'm going to carry on with my running training as well with Molusk Carriers now. Because I've set another personal goal for excuse me, September 2019 and um, to do the Belfast Half Marathon. That's a big one for me. I really, really want to do that. That would be a, you know, it's not the full marathon, but it's a half marathon. So what, what's that, 13 miles or something stupid like that? Um, yeah, I just, I'm not going to do the half marathon for any charity or anything like that, that one's all for me, I'm just going to go out and run, um, I really have missed being able to get out and do my running for the last few weeks because I have been focusing so much on my running, and my own, my, I do my own running anyway, but I haven't been able to go out running with the Molusk Harriers, um, that has 
that has really annoyed me a bit because I felt it was so essential for A, my motivation and B, for my fitness, but as well as it's nice to see friendly faces who aren't trying to kick the shit out of you at <laughs> every opportunity. So um, it's Tuesday night tonight. I should have been out with them, but unfortunately I've been trying to fix my heating system. My boiler has packed in. Always a good thing at winter time. So we'll be back out with them on Thursday night for the road run. And hopefully I can still manage to bang out 5k um, with them. So yeah, I'm going to follow this up with a um, bit of advice. Um, I'll do a separate video for that because this is already 20 minutes long. A bit of advice for anyone who's considering doing ultra MMA and some things to consider and what to go through. But other than that, that's this video series closed for now. I will start again. I think I'll document it again whenever I'm doing my 2019 training. Um, obviously, my training is going to carry on anyway for the next lot of months. Um, but yeah, so thank you all from the absolute bottom of my heart. This goes pride of place on my uh, living room. I'm not really worried about this. This is just nice to have. But yeah, so. Roll on 2019. Thank you very much. Um, if I see you soon, um, we'll get a chat. Um, again, I want to thank everyone who turned up to the event, everyone who sponsored me, and everyone who's motivated me. It has been a harrowing year for me, and this has possibly been the best thing I've done in my whole life. So thank you for your time.